Exclusive reaction to the new development, South Carolina Senator Tim Scott. Senator, um, I asked you about that. I ran into you when I was at the State of the Union, and you kind of shrugged it off. So here's an yes. opportunity where this minister is asked, and starts laughing, crowd starts laughing. Um, his job, his calling, the job of the NAACP, he says, is to speak the truth, and he stands by it. He won't apologize. I want to yeah. get your reaction first, and then I, I have a thought on it. Well, I tell you, I, I have not found that scripture in the Bible that says you ought to demonize those folks you do not know. I'd love to hear the chapter and the verse on that one. But I think what I think is outrageous, frankly, is the silence that we hear as kids trapped in poverty do not find the opportunity to escape poverty through education. I find it outrageous that there's such a level of silence. We can't hear people responding to the fact that we have kids today that are suffering. They cannot find their way out, and yet the leaders who have the great opportunity to use their voices on behalf of the people will not take a stand on behalf of those folks trapped in failing schools and say enough is enough. What I find outrageous is the fact that we have such a high unemployment rate, and we spend very little time having a debate about that. But instead, what people will debate is whether or not they know the definition of a dummy. And I just uh, find that quite remarkable. But this, this, you are not alone in this. This is the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, okay? Does that mean only liberals, only Democrats need apply? Well, Here you have been the first black senator since Reconstruction in the South. And I would think, whether they agree or disagree with you politically, would think this is yeah. a good thing. What does that say about the organization that wouldn't respond to us nationally and speak out about what this man has said to you and the way he's viciously attacked you? Well, Sean, I, I got to tell you that the bottom line for me is that unfortunately, Reverend Barber's comments can go uncontested by too many leaders without any question. M my focus has always been on the opportunities that this country has afforded me. The fact of the matter is that I've give, been given the privilege of living the American dream because of hard work, uh, a strong mama who believed in my future, did at times, and yet we have this problem that seems to be. Uh, rampant in so many communities, black ones, white ones, Hispanic ones. Throughout the nation, we have kids trapped in deplorable positions and, and places, and yet the leaders of the community are missing the opportunity to stand. And listen, the way I look at it is we've had several organizations that have served our country well, and, and perhaps it's time for us to take a second look in the mirror and find out what we're fighting for in the 21st century and not the 20th century. But it seems that, you know, the left seems to have this monopoly on compassion and being non-discriminatory, but it seems it's inconsistent with reality. All right, but, uh, it's it, inconsistent. It, it's inconsistent, but it seems open season. If you're black and conservative, you can be called uh, every name in the book, and nobody in the media calls them on it. Let me let me give you an example. Uh, well, well you're asking. Well, I mean, listen, I, I've been an elected Republican for 18 years now, and unfortunately, and I say unfortunately, I've had the opportunity to hear really abrasive comments towards me, insulting comments towards me. And the worst part, and Sean, this is what really gets under my skin a little bit, it's the fact that we have kids all over this country that are listening to these so-called leaders talking about other leaders. And unfortunately, what those kids walk away with is that if I step out of line, if I think for myself, if I'm not a part of a monolithic thinking community, that I'm somehow ostracized, kicked out, not relevant to the future of that community. That, right. That's just ridiculous. David also confronted some of the people that were in this march about the Tea Party and whether or not, for example, the, the unemployment rate in the black community is almost twice that at the national average. Uh, I'll tell you, the only reason I stayed out of trouble as a kid because I had a job every summer. Yeah, black well, youth unemployment is about 50 percent now. That's not good for anybody, I think. So not, he not asked them these questions. Let me play it and get your reaction. Sure. Do you think the Tea Party is racist? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Can you give me some examples? Oh, Can you give me an example now of how the Tea Party is racist? Uh, um, no, because I'm not thinking about them right now. Uh, um, I think they're racist against blacks, Hispanics. I think they're what, what's an example? Women. What have they the done? Things they say about abortions. Is, is their reaction to us having a black president that makes them racist? Come here, you're very. Is the Tea Party racist? And can we give him examples of how the Tea Party? Can you, can you give me an example right now? How the Tea Party's racist? I mean, I, I mean, 
mean, I don't, I don't know what you want me to say. They are. Black unemployment's about double the national rate, and that's, that's a real tragedy. Are you frustrated with President Obama? Do you think he's failed? No. No. Okay. no. Right. I think he's tried, and I think that Congress has failed him. Didn't he promise us more? Has he failed? I don't think so. He's working real hard. The Republicans will try to keep him from moving forward. Do you think the president, President Obama, has failed? Has failed the black community? No. I think Republicans have failed. I think the Congress has failed. Okay. They have not done their job. Anyone thinks the Tea Party's racist, they can't give one example. You know, Obama right. got everything he wanted passed. Promise jobs, shovel ready, and stimulus, and summer of recovery. Nothing happened. But it's the Republicans' well, well, fault. Your, what's your reaction to that tape? What does that tell you? Well, yeah, uh, Sean, a couple things. If you were looking for examples of, of the diversity of the conservative movement, think of Ted Cruz. Think of Marco Rubio. Think of Alan West. Think of myself. The great diversity of the conservative movement doesn't know a color. What we know are principles that have guided this country for 230, almost eight years now. And the fact of the matter is if you, you find some type of r r racial animosity in the concept of school choice that provides an opportunity for kids who are trapped in failing schools to find their way out, Please explain that to me. If, if you think about the Skills Act that was passed by the House, I'm sp sponsoring it, and think about that opportunity to get people who are trapped in, in jobs that may be coming obsolete or archaic, here's an opportunity to retrain those folks. Uh, this is the conservative side of our party having great compassion coming right. forward and saying we have real solutions for real people who need real help. Senator, the one thing I'll add to that, though, is the NAACP National needs to step up. Are they going to take a position on this? And until they do, we're going to challenge them to take that position because this has gone way too far against you and against many others. So we appreciate you being with us. Sean, thank you for being, for being a fighter of freedom. That's what you represent exactly. and that's what yeah. we need. Well, I, and I'd like to see some jobs for kids, for everybody. What? Well, right, hearty amen. All thank right. you, sir.